Hello and welcome to the channel and welcome to another Game of Thrones reaction. Yes, we're back. Episode 5. I'm not entirely sure what this is called. Um, I didn't do a reaction for episodes 3 and 4. Uh, I was going to do a review for them because I didn't think that Game of Thrones was going to be able to come back because I had a bit of a dispute with HBO. But that has been resolved and resolved in my favour. So I'm, I'm back with Game of Thrones and I'll give you a rundown of what I thought of episodes 3 and 4 in this. It's going to take a while because it's, they, they were just such, such fantastic episodes. So let's start with episode 3, Queen's Justice. First point, Euron parading Yara and the Sand Snakes around as a prize and giving essentially giving uh, the killers of Mycella to Cersei to do with what she wishes. And God, was it a gruesome and horrific punishment. Words cannot describe how twisted her punishment was. But at the same time, the, the woman did poison a little girl. So I ain't bothered that much. But it was more Cersei's pledge to marry Euron after the war is over. That is a promise I don't think she intends to keep. I don't know if Euron's going to be around long enough for her to need to keep that, in all honesty. But it was a, a certainly a turn of events. The Unsullied. The Unsullied take Casterly Rock, but Jamie ever the master strategist, is, has taken most of the army out of there, most of the civilians out of there, and is currently taking over um, the Reach. And that's when he finds out that it was the Queen of Thorns herself that had arranged Joffrey's death at the Purple Wedding. Now Jamie knows that Tyrion was never guilty. I know that Jamie always protected Tyrion, but now he knows for sure that Tyrion had nothing to do with Joffrey's death. That might become important later. John goes to see Danny to basically to recruit her help. But all she all she blabbered on about was bend the knee bend the knee bend the knee oh i'll come and help you if you bend the knee i'll, I'll listen to what you're saying if you bend the knee like shut up seriously danny was obsessed you could see a bit of the the obsession of the mad king and she has started to make some very questionable decisions lucky she has Tyrion and now john there to sort of temper that temper <laughs> to control that but for how long Bran and Sansa's uh, reunion was lovely but Bran is something else now there's a theory going round that that isn't Bran at all and that the, the, the old three eyed raven um, Brynden Rivers actually took over Bran's body I don't think so. I don't. I don't think that at all. But it's interesting because Branny's changed, and I think it was in a, in the next episode, in episode four, where uh, Mira says to Bran that he died in that cave. I think. And yeah, I know she was talking figuratively, but is there uh, an actual physical? Uh, meaning behind those words also is this foreshadowing the spoils of war and we had the Arya and Sansa reunion and we had the Arya and Bran reunion which was brilliant because we got Littlefinger trying to crawl his way into Bran's favour now thinking that Bran is going to be the Lord of Winterfell as the rightful heir giving him the Valyrian dagger and what does he do with the dagger? He gives it to Arya. And then Littlefinger witnesses Arya sword fighting with Brienne. And sees that he's got the... That he gave away the, the dagger. Nice. And of course Sansa watched the, the sword fight between Arya and Brienne as well. 
And she sort of walked away with a, without saying a word, a look of concern on her face. And I think that's because she now knows that Arya is more than capable of carrying out the assassinations that she didn't really admit to earlier on. I think, uh, I think Sansa is now fully in the knowledge that probably Arya did kill the Freys. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be fun. John shows Danny the cave paintings, secretly hiding the bit of chalk behind his back. So Danny has got no choice but to believe him. And still, she said, bend the knee. Oh, God. And I think John will. This is after the battle, after that awesome, what's it called? The loot train battle. I think that John will bend the knee. But more, more of that later. Um, so, yeah, the battle was fantastic. Likewise with the Battle of the Bastards in the last season. A lot of it was, you know, like Bronn um, making his way from Jamie to the Scorpion in order to kill the dragon. A lot of that was done in one shot. And with all the effects and the fire, and that must have been such a hard scene to shoot. And to organise and choreograph, uh, just amazing. Uh, that scene alone is probably one of the best battle scenes I've seen ever. And the added dragon into it was glorious. But then we had Jamie being saved by Bronn, admittedly, jumping in the water or pushing him into the water. And Jamie, blah, so with that amount of heavy armour on, I'm thinking he's a goner, really. Yeah, there's no way one handed he can get that armour off and swim to the surface. And without getting the armour off, he's going to drown. Unless, of course, Bronn can save him and he's got to struggle to the surface carrying a fully armoured person no that's I don't know but either way I think John is going to go back I think they're all going to go back to Dragonstone you know Daenerys is going to tell John of how the battle went John is going to realise that if he doesn't bend the knee, that he's not going to get the ally that he needs. And he's not going to be able to influence this very possibly mad Targaryen. So he's going to go back to Winterfell, where he may or may not find out his true heritage. Tell them that he's going to bend the knee. There's going to be uproar, of course, in the north. Um, but then he's going to show them the dragon. And quite a lot of people still in Westeros don't believe that Danny has real dragons. Because they haven't seen them for hundreds of years. Now, obviously, Jamie and Bronn have seen that there is real dragons. And any surviving Lannister soldiers that will be able to tell the whole world that, yes, these dragons are in fact very, very, very real and very hot. Yeah, I think once John shows Winterfell and his bannerman the dragon, or one of Danny's dragon, possibly um, Viserion or something, because I think he's like, he's named after Viserys and uh, Danny didn't like him anyway. So, so take Viserion, show the bannerman what having an ally in Daenerys means. And I'm sure they will support him in bending the knee to Danny. After all, we can always do, do her in afterwards once the war's won. Anyway, we can get on with episode five and see what the hell is going to happen after that aftermath of the battle. I, sh I can't wait and I don't need to. I'm going to do it now. And Jamie's been saved. <laughs> of course he has. Can't kill off a main character. Well, what am I talking about? This is Game of Thrones. Listen to me, cunt. <laughs> I get what I'm 
A dragon doesn't get to kill you. You don't get to kill you. Only I get to kill you. Fair enough. Just two more. If she decides to use them, to really use that. Yours. Yes. Yes. I mean, we're fucked. No, I do not. No, because he'll turn coat. Dragons are where our partnership ends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to be around when those things start spitting fire on King's Landing. I offer you a choice. Bend the knee and join me. Together, we will leave the world a better place than we found it. Or refuse. And die. Oh, Tyrion doesn't like that. Because they're not bend they're not bending out of choice, they're bending out of fear. Sentence you to die. Shit, she did it. Dracaris. Oh you This isn't right. Sam is now the head of House Tarly. Because he's a Targaryen. God, that's scary. He likes it. Oh. Now Danny's gonna know. Think why, how, how can you do that? Why is this making me emotional? <laughs> it's a little, little happy noises it makes. You found a cure. I wouldn't be here if I hadn't. I return to your service, my queen. If you'll have me. It would be my honour. Yes, excellent. Is he sending out messages? Oh, he's sending out scouts. East watch by the sea. I thought he might send some sort of scouting party, warged animals to the north. Oh my god, they're close! Holy shit, there's loads of them! Oh shit. Ravens. We need to send ravens. <laughs> a crippled boy claims to have seen dead men on the march beyond the wall. Thanks to the magical help of a raven with three eyes. As it is a bit much. Still, we ought to... Brandon run Stark. Yes. A crippled boy. Do you know him? I led him through the wall years ago. I saw him go beyond the wall. Somehow, a crippled boy survived for years beyond the wall when no one else could. Not the Night's Watch, not the Wild yeah. Ends, no one. Perhaps we ought to listen to what he has to say. <laughs> you need more scribing work to discipline your mind. I sense a more detailed proposal is forthcoming. I think it's just stories, they're idiots. Is he the one whose father and brother were just burnt alive? I'm afraid so. Have you told him? I haven't had the heart to tell him yet. No, shit. He's a good lad. Bran saw the Night King and his army marching towards Eastwatch. If they make it past the wall... The wall has kept them out for thousands of years, presumably. I need to go home. You said you don't have enough men. We'll fight with the men we have. Unless you'll join us. And give the country to Cersei. As soon as I march away, she marches in. She thinks the army of the dead is nothing but a story. Made up by wet nurses to frighten children. What if we prove her wrong? I don't think she'll come see the dead at my invitation. So bring the dead to her. Let them invade? I thought that was what we were trying to avoid. We don't have to bring the whole army. 
Only one soldier. The only person she listens to is Jamie. He might listen to me. Oh, yes, he might. Oh, well done, Tyrion. Bring Jamie into the fold. And how would you get into King's Landing? You're not staying here? I've got my own business in Flea Bottom. <laughs> of course he has. What if someone takes the boat? Then we're fucked. Best hurry. <laughs> Oh, what's his business in Flea Bottom? Around the blacksmiths. Could we be seeing Gendry? That looks like Gendry. No, no, they can't. They can't bring Robert's bastard back again. They fucking can as well. Wasn't sure I'd find you. <laughs> Thought you might still be rowing. <laughs> Looked in shops, taverns, brothels. Should have known to come straight to the street of steel. You gotta get rowing again. Came to get me. <clears throat> you want me to come with you? Well, I think you need to understand. I'm it. ready. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> you should know what you're heading into. What do you think I've been thinking about with every swing of a hammer? Might want to bring one of those swords. I don't know much about swinging swords, but this, this I know. Oh, now that is a hammer. Where'd you get that scar? Fisher, some men you just can't teach. We was looking for a dwarf with a scar like that a while back. Perhaps there's some arrangement? <laughs> Go talk. You're going to arrange to pay us more than Queen Sir. Oh! Well, someone had to. It was getting complicated. She's madder than Daenerys, I think. She's not pregnant again. Who will you say is the father? You. Oh, straight back under a spell again. <sighs> Never betray me again. Don't have to worry. You're just Clovis, a smith who's come to pay his respects before he heads off to work at the Winterfell Forges. Understood. This is Prince Gendry, Your Grace. <laughs> I'm Robert Baratheon's son. Bastard son. <laughs> he was meant to keep that to himself. Our fathers trusted each other. Why shouldn't we? What does annulment mean? It's when a man sets aside his lawful wife. Maynard says here that he issued an annulment for a Prince Ragger and remarried him to someone else at the same time. Liana! ...ceremony in Dawn. Is that a common thing in the South? Of These maesters. I, they set me to the task of preserving that man's wind accounting and annulments and bowel movements for all. Oh, she just gave you the massive bit of information there. <sighs> what are you doing, Sam? You're gonna go on the run. You're gonna. You're gonna. You're taking Gilly and young Sam up north, aren't you? Back to Winterfell. It's gonna end right now, isn't it? You bastards. This is where they're gonna find how close the dead are. God, winter really is coming, isn't it? Oh, what? Wow, another fantastic episode. Um, it's really, really heating up, isn't it? I think I may have to watch that episode again to catch some of the finer points. Um, so I'll give a, an opinion of 
you know, a fuller opinion, like I did with episodes three and four at the beginning of this video, I'll do this episode on the next video. <laughs> Give me a chance to watch it in a bit more detail, but all I can say is, yeah, I, I loved it. I loved the interplay between John and Danny and Tyrion. I loved the fact that Tyrion met up with Jamie again. I thought Jamie was going to turncoat. But it seems that he's even more under Cersei's spell than he ever was now that we found out that Cersei's pregnant again with another incestuous child. So, Tommen was okay, Marcella was okay, Joffrey was a complete basket case, so 50-50, this one's going to be a complete basket case as well. Talking of basket cases, Cersei's a complete basket case now. I think, I think she always, always was. And Danny definitely is showing signs. I don't like to admit it because Danny's always been my favourite in this, but she's showing, showing signs of being a bit mad. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next episode. Until then, keep well and bye bye.